Hello. How you doing? What was that? Uh, it was my my trumpet fanfare that didn't work very well. Uh, <laughs> no. If only can I can I can you do that again and can I film you doing it because no. I just want people to see your face as you do oh, it. God. It doesn't work on a podcast, does it? Do it. <laughs> All right, here we go. And there we go. It was like basically 20th Century Fox, but better. <laughs> No. Right, okay. okay that's, that's welcome good. to the Harley and Josh show, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, we are a music podcast. Yes. Um, all focusing on new music from in and around our local area, but we're not going to tell you where that is because you'll figure it out. That's <sighs> part of the game. Yeah. Um, and also, lost. we've got some music from Curtis Cully. Yeah. A.D. Johnson. And uh, swimsuit competition. Yeah, I was just waiting for your reactions after all of them. Because sometimes oh. you react after Should one. You go, okay. you go uh, there was Curtis Cully. Ooh. Uh, A.D. Johnson. <gasps> And swimsuit competition. Yes! And the Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he loves a good swimsuit competition. Oh, yeah. um, also, we've got some mu- uh, some some muse. Uh, we haven't got any muse. We've got music muse. muse. Music mu- music muse. <laughs> Spoonerized. Um, well, yeah, we're going to be talking about 123 artists have filed an amicus brief. Uh, in uh, the Led Zeppelin's closely watched Stairway to Heaven Lord's lawsuit. We'll tell you what an amicus brief is at some point. And also... Please, um, I have no idea. The Divide Tour is officially the highest grossing concert tour of all time. Uh, we'll talk to you about that a bit later. And we're going to also ask about songs sounding the same and how much of a thing it really where, is. Where? What, what's the cut off? Where? What? When? Who? Uh, how? how? Sutton? Who? who? Um, yeah, all oh, that might be a clue to where we're <laughs> recording this podcast. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Harley, you know, the most important question that we want to ask this entire day is not. <laughs> What'd you do? It, it's, it's, what did you do last week? That's, oh, that's the real question. Well, that's nearly the same question, but I will gloss over that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I spent most of last week in bed. Um, oh. Those who were... Since Listening in last week, knew how unwell I was, and yes. I w- it was not good. Um, There's photo evidence. Yeah, I went home, I went straight to bed, and I didn't get out for like three days. Mm. I was not not in a good way. I was really annoyed because I wanted to go climbing, and I mm. couldn't. I was supposed to be working at the shop, and I couldn't, and I felt terrible. I w- had to do some repairs um, on some guitars, and that had to be delayed till Thursday. But I ended up you doing do that. You can do bed, can you? Oh, yeah, when well, yeah, <laughs> just be I, uh, like sleeping on broken strings and like cut off bits. I do that, that anyway. Sounds like a song name. Oh my god, sleeping on broken strings. There you go, Rob Lewis. Yeah, well, yeah. Enjoy. There we go. You can have that one. <laughs> sounds pretty country. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, how? Um, yeah. So my week didn't really start until Thursday. I had I had some repairs to do in the shop uh, that I was supposed to do Tuesday or Wednesday. So I I rushed in on Thursday to do that. The toilets. Um. Yeah. Thanks to James Gunn be there by himself. So. Of course, of course, of course. Wrong one. Wrong one. I, uh, yeah, so I had a, I replaced the pickups on a Telecaster, a uh, new Seymour Duncan's. Uh, that was really quite fun. Nice. Um, really what simple job. Telecasters are really easy because the wiring's so simple on them. Mm. However, if you change the bridge pickup, you have to take off the entire bridge. Really? Because the yes, bridge, of course. The pickups attached to the bridge and yeah, straight bridges. Yeah, so uh, that that was a bit of a an issue, but it's fine. You chop the strings off and just put them back on. It's fine. Yeah, um, that um, is a faff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a few little basic earth wire re- attachments. That's the most common fix we do is is jack socket repairs. Yes, I can it's imagine. Always, always it's the people thing because they don't know what's yeah. what's what's the right way to to take a jack out. Uh, get a run up. <laughs> no, no. Always pull it out by the metal bit, not by the the rubber wire bit. The cable, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, these are on the guitars, and I mean, we every year uh, Northgate give us their guitars. Northgate School, they give yeah. us our guitars and go. This one doesn't work. This one does work, but it makes a funny noise when you do this. This one's fine. Just give it a restring. La di da di da. And we just we spend the six weeks working through those and. Nice. Uh, it's always good fun because you just get it all in at once. Yeah, um, exactly. We had a uh, criminally small amount of guitars to fix this time around. Really? Uh, the kids have gotten good. They've, yeah, they've actually been told to to look after them a bit yeah. more, maybe. Yeah, and so uh, it wasn't 
too bad. Um, so I was just there for the morning doing the repairs because in the afternoon I had my cousin all the way from Australia. My cousin Roshana was visiting ah. um, and she was a big fan of old Ed. Mr. All right, Mr. Yes. Shearer, so she wanted to go see the castle on the hill. I'm not going to say where that castle on the hill is. Oh, yes, of course. Because we're, we are recording from a private location. <laughs> and this is roughly 36 minutes from the Ooh. castle on the hill. So uh, we went around. 26 seconds. Have you been to the castle on the hill? No, I have been around it. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah. Is it on a hill? <laughs> yes. No. No. No, it's... We have to go up yeah, in Framling to get it. To get there. Yeah, but it's not really that much of a hill. And it is a bit of a... It's a know, castle on a mound. On a mound. <laughs> I suppose they usually should all be, because they've got like moats and stuff, and they... Yeah, but then if the moat's filled with water, it's not a hill, it's just a, a riverbank. <laughs> Fair. I mean, do, do, do you want to call his lawyers, or shall I? I mean, maybe maybe we've we got the wrong castle. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe it's yeah, St. Michael's talking... Mount. Yeah, that's not... definitely on a hill. That's more... That's on a... Rock. Might be Edinburgh Castle, probably, yeah. 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 Oh, Lincoln Cathedral. Yeah. That's certainly on a hill. Welcome it's not to a the castle. New Holland and Joshua podcast <laughs> listing castles. <laughs> Orford. <laughs> I can't think of any. <laughs> no, no, no. Sterling. There we go. Oh, there we go. Um, Blair. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I'm trying to think of somebody <laughs> whose last name is Castle. Oh, Frank from The Punisher. This is his name, Frank Castle. Frank Castle yeah. There we go. Um, Facts. Watch your language, mate. <laughs> yeah so yeah, that was my th- well for thursday it was quite nice Good. um it was a fairly laid back uh week up until what did we do a gig on friday no we didn't it's fine uh, <laughs> it's good it's a podcast with himself as well it's great. what are we doing what are we do oh i'm doing this oh okay 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 should we tell him about that <sighs> no, just, okay. i would listen to an hour of that it. actually i will do it Okay. Next time, well, next time you're not here, I will do that and I will interview myself. You get more listeners to this show because it should be a bunch of people listening into a man having a mental breakdown. Yeah, <laughs> so they go, I've forgotten everything. <laughs> It'll be a mental health council listening in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so my Saturday, uh, I was playing uh, a birthday party. No, sorry, that's completely wrong. It was an anniversary party uh, in Stowe Market, and this couple they have a party that's every what year. Birthdays are, isn't it? It's an anniversary of being alive. Well, I guess. Maybe so, it's so, the so, birth so of their wedding. Uh, yeah. 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 Birth, it's a wedding birthday. Wedding, wedding, wedding birthday. Um, either way works. Uh, <laughs> please don't write in. Uh, it, was, um, it was great. It was a chart attack. Um, you don't have a registered address. That's why you can't write in. Yeah. No. 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 You don't know where we are. So you can't <laughs> oh, yes. write in. Um, email Harley and Joshua at gmail.com, I guess. Yeah, no one does that. Yeah. Apart from Dave Langdon. And Sam when he has to t- send us the recordings for the oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, if you're not Dave or Sam, email in and just say hi. <laughs> uh, just yeah. Harley and Joshua at gmail.com. Literally just message. Maybe send us a picture of your cat. The Highly and Joshua. That's it. The Highly and... Yeah. Either way. <laughs> yeah. Um... I was just mentioning people are spelling my name wrong, but we'll come back. Yeah, we'll come I'm, back to I'm that bit. I'm going to shut up and let you talk. Um, so this was a chart attack. We were playing in someone's back garden. They had a stage in their garden, or well, like decking, but it was quite high up, and we were on this bit, which was great because sound wise, the PA was on the floor in front of us, ah, so it was no bleed. Good. It was really nice, separated sound, and we could have a really punchy kit sound. Um, we had to sound check without Oscar because he was in London rehearsing with a band he's playing with. Yeah. Um, so we had to sound check without him, which is lucky. I had my amp. I took a guitar. Uh, Oscar used my amp for that, that gig just so we could right. just put a mic on front of it and make sure it works. Yes, the night train. Right now? now that it works, yes. Yeah. Um, and it was just as well that we did that because Oscar turned up to the gig straight from London, um, literally pedal board in one hand, Guitar amp over a shoulder, three songs in, breaks a string. Oh. And doesn't have a spare string because oh. he bought a spare set, broke the D string, <gasps> used that, broke the same D, well, not the same D string, but this D string the D string he replaced it. It's always the D that breaks for me. Yeah. Maybe it's just a, like a, it just a, a type it's of a chords that you're thing. playing. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, he went, oh, what am I going to do? I haven't got a spare string. Um, so I went, well, luckily, 
I brought my guitar for sound check, so he just used my guitar for the second set, oh, that's cool. which is very lucky because I very nice. rarely will take a, have a guitar with yeah, of me. Of course, what guitar was it? Uh, it was my uh, PV Wolfgang. I thought I just assumed it would be that. one. That's actually. my main one. Yeah, it's well, nice. I, I've got two guitars because you don't need more than two. I've got a humbucker one, and a single coil one. I mean, controversial. As a bass player, <laughs> I don't need more than yeah, two. Fair. I can hardly play one. So <laughs> there's not really a need for me to to have anything more. And uh, yeah, the, the I would have taken the Strat because it's good for that kind of music. Mm. Uh, but uh, the D-string broke on it, so uh, <laughs> I left that at home. So I am... It's the name of this week's episode, Broken D's. Broken D's. Uh, no. Anyway, so um, don't Google it. So... <laughs> Yeah, that was a really good night. Um, we're sifting through some of the footage. We, we filmed some of it. So we're going through some of the footage of that now, see what we can find uh, that we could chuck up and uh, share with the world because uh, we haven't done a public show for a little while. We haven't got one, I don't think, until the end of the month, I believe. So um, mm. we, uh, we're we going to have to uh, let people know that we still exist. Yeah. Cause, uh, uh, it's, What's your plan for doing that? Uh, we've got some videos. We've got some. Uh, we're gonna just just find a nice little clip of some cool happenings. I don't know. I just I just nodded at the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it happens. It happens so much. Um, so we're gonna do that. We I uploaded a full heart. Well, a full half of the second set. Yeah. That's in no way full of That's anything. A, it's a Lord of the Rings reference. Um, a full half. What are, they come in pints. You've already got a whole half. <laughs> Yes, of course. Otherwise, Irish. He's not Irish. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to just go through. I've got the guys looking through that, seeing which bits they think are good good little moments. We might not put a whole song up, just put... Oscar was playing some amazing solo. Can you know when you get, like, a new guitar, and you're like, yeah! And he was really loving it. He was like, this sounds great. It's nice and different. So he was really into it. So um, uh, he was playing that, and so he was playing some absolute belters. So we might chuck some bits up here and there. Uh, depends what uh, what comes out good, really. So that's the plan for that. Nice. Uh, Sunday, I uh, took it nice and easy and had a very easy gig at the Froys at Chillsford. Yeah, Chills. Chillsford. Chillsford. Chills. Easy gig. Easy gig at Chillsford. Mm. Nice and easy. Nice. Now, uh, yeah, um, John Hart, who usually does sound at Folk at the Froys, he's off with Sam Kelly and the Lost Boys, as is Lucy. Uh, they're, they're touring around and playing with their, those guys and doing some really cool stuff. So Sam's uh, partner, uh, Kitty McFarlane, was what was doing the gig at Folk at the Froys. She is amazing. She is really good. Just really great storytelling songs, really well made, beautiful voice, great guitar work. She's playing some really complex stuff and just making it look easy. It was just really lovely. Um, I had it nice and easy because three channels up leave it to it she didn't want too much reverb so i just played that really nicely um I had tony bell from the grapevine he was filming some of it so hopefully there might Ooh. be some footage of that going up yeah, at some point soon at, he's good at being there for those yeah he does some really cool stuff and very supportive for all Absolutely. music things um check out grapevine yeah check I out mean, grapevine if you're listening to this you probably know what grapevine is now but. yeah and you might know what josh looks like from being on the cover many <laughs> times or, or just being in it, you're just you're just, you're, you're like their your base their basic like stock placeholder. Photo, yeah. yeah, you're their placeholder. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was great. It was good fun. Um, just really enjoyable, and I love doing those gigs because they're so simple. Really, um, yeah. it's a nice chance to bump into some people as well. Often we get some good good friends coming along. Like I say, usually Lucy and John are there. Tony often makes an appearance appearance appearance. <laughs> It's a word. It's a real word, guys. It's my new word. It's, this is a new thing. The Harley and Josh show. Don't Google it. Don't Google it. And, and uh, that pretty much... Uh, does it. Does it. did stuff. Well done, buddy. We're proud of you. Uh, cool, mate. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know. This is why I was just, just glancing at my phone just then. Rude. Harley, this week, have you had any... Harley's pub band sins come to mind. I haven't. I haven't done no. any pub gigs, so nothing really jumps to mind. I was thinking. I was, I'm wrapping my brain. I mean, we might have exhausted this feature already. No, no, no I don't think we thing. have. No, we don't. Can I? Can I call out? Can I call pub crowd sins? Pub. Oh, go on. Go, go on. I like do, that. Pub crowd sins. Pub crowd sins. Three, four. What, what is in the time signature? No. Or there's thirty-four Just, people. When you sound check in, one, two, and someone. Three, four. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> 
Uh, exactly. Uh, it's that's bad, just isn't it? Just like, come on, mate. You know it's not. You know it's not original because you did it last week. Yeah. <laughs> and did, and did that, five seconds. Ago. And the other band went. Oh, not again. Yeah, exactly. Every single time. So that that can. I mean, I know we talked, we talked about it before, but yeah. please just don't. Just let's do our job, mate. Yeah. Just, I mean, if we're sound checking, we'll probably say like we're just going to sound check. We're also trying to listen to the room as well. Yeah, yeah. You're going um, one, two, and then somebody says three, four. You're like, I'm trying to hear the reflections, man. Shut up. <laughs> just yeah, just let me. <laughs> Mm. Anyway, all I'm right, not well, a violent man. That's I'm not a, a violent man. Harley's local gig sins. <laughs> New ones. Right, okay. Let's play some music. Um, we've got some amazing artists playing locally. Uh, this one is by a wonderful man called A.D. Johnson. Uh, this track uh, is available on his most recent album, London Songs. Um, we actually met him ages ago when we went to the Sue Marchant show uh, yeah. in Cambridge uh, on BBC. Uh, radio and he was just a really nice guy to talk to has some great songs and he's playing with dusky sunday very soon if you stick around for the giggliest we'll tell you what this is problems of your own That was Problems of Your Own by A.D. Johnson, available on iTunes and Spotify and all that sort of stuff. Love it. Really nice and bouncy. Lovely, yeah. Got that sort of like uh, Americana feel, but with this kind of brass band sort of thing that you'd expect from a Victorian English town, which is, I suppose, is why it wants to be called London Songs. You know? So anyway, yeah. uh, oh, I'm, you know, I, I did some things and I'm going to tell you about it and everything. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want to congratulate Harley on uh, during that song. Uh, we were talking about <laughs> just things we things we do. This is what we do. Think, and he just, just said, uh, I'm not going to finish that sentence. I mean, I don't even know where it's going. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how long it's supposed to be. So let's, let's just let's put this, just, just start, put the mics up. Like 20 seconds left. And I, I, I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. It's very so self-aware. We'll just, we'll, very we'll self-aware. Like over. So, However, we've got the whole of the next song for me to just do one yeah, sentence. Exactly. <laughs> Good, good. I'll finish it off. Uh, previously on Harley Cotton. Um, so, yeah, uh, last week I had quite a nice busy one. Um, I was in uh, uh, Area 51. Yeah. Harley, you hooked me up with that practice studio. Thank you very much for that. No worries. Um, as we were around the corner at Foyer's Photography, um, which, uh, you know, so if, if Area 51's on the left, um, sort of, you know, when you're driving yeah. down, this is in RAF Bentwaters. Well, was RAF Bentwaters. Now it's just Bentwaters. Yeah. Um, and just past your turn off and on the right, there's the there's the, the happy pets place or whatever. Yeah. And over the road from that, there's a photography studio um, uh, yeah. where he sort of does um, a, a guy called Ga- oh Gary. I want to say Gary. I might have, I might have messed it up. Um, and he uh, he's got a little studio there with with all the, the amount of lights and stuff. It's quite amazing. Nice. But it was all for uh, Sophie Tot, who's uh, the Tallulah Good Times is her, uh, yeah. her alter ego when she's fighting crime. Um, she uh, <laughs> with music um, and spangly headphones. Take uh, that she, crime. Yes, exactly. Take that you s word. Um, <laughs> burnt face man is that a burnt face yeah. man reference oh my god I haven't heard one well, of those in years because it's so on PC uh, that <laughs> wasn't actually crime that was a box with crime written on it <laughs> um, uh, yeah so anyway um, yeah so we were we were all dressed up all sort of vintage 30s I, had, I trimmed my moustache down even smaller so I could have the sort of the old old oh, sort yes. of the, the Gomez Adams look from Fram's from family um, and it, so it was Hannah Hinchliffe uh, to do the good times with Sophie, uh, Jade May Jean, Rich yep. Webb, Murray Collins, and I. And nice. I think that's a really fun little room to be part of, actually. Yeah. Um, just listening to what everybody gets up to. So I wish I could have had a podcast of that just for, you know, to listen to. It would have been quite fun. Um, so yeah, we went immediately over to Area 51 and just ran through the sort of the bare basics of all the tracks just to sort of do two hours worth of practice while we were all free. And yeah, it's starting to come together really good. We're going to be performing on the 23rd of August at Maui Wow Fest, Maui Wow Wee Festival <laughs> in Theberton in Suffolk. Um, oh, it's another slight indication of where we're recording from. Um, yeah, and that's about, what, 20 minutes drive? I think. 20 uh, minutes west. Yes, west. East, oh, east, east. All right, where's the longitude? Jeez. Um, clicks. You've got to do it in clicks. Otherwise, it doesn't sound like you're, you know, really trying. 
I don't know, he's trying to do a Morse code now. <laughs> the Morse code podcast. We keep changing this podcast every week. Ah, oh, it's gone off the rails. Uh, um, so yeah, that was the good, we're calling it the, well, say we, Sophie's calling it the Good Times Republic. Oh, that's a good name. I, I like that. that. Yeah, right. So it's, uh, if anybody's ever listened to the Quantic and his Como Barbaro um, band, it's that kind of thing. So it's got this kind of uh, electronic mixed with um, sort of, uh, yeah, gypsy swing. Sweet. All together, so it's going to sound really good. So yeah, fun to do a photo shoot. Just you know, probably if you look at it, you'll just see all of our faces pretty much stay exactly the same. In you know, the back row, which is all the dudes, we're sort of like, just stay still. Maybe well, they won't see you. In those days, it was weird to smile in a photo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, we all look like we're about to die from the plague. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, yes, so that was fun. Um, on the Tuesday, I want to say Tuesday actually, um, I was. No, I think it might be Monday. Anyway, I'm having a podcast by myself again. Yeah. Um, so this has changed the format again. Um, I was actually here next door in the studio uh, at Punch Studios uh, to help some of our friends with a, a band they formed. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Annie, uh, Anna sorry, um, yeah. and uh, Nigel. Okay, and, cool. Uh, Andrew and Martin, all the guys from The Rock Project, um, starting their own, their own band, doing some covers and things, and they just wanted somebody to listen in and and see what it sounded like and, and give them pointers and what to practice and how to practice and things like that. Amazing. So just went along just to say, just sit down and say, this is good, do this again. And I was sort of giving them practice tips as if to say like, so don't just go through the song and when you're done with the song, cool, on to the next thing. Yeah. I said, focus more on, on structural elements. So just, you know, let's go over that bridge and not just sit there and let's, can we get to the end of the bridge? It's, all right, let's listen to the the sort of uh, different things that are happening in the bridge, the different rhythms and things like this, uh, and, you know, where to lock in. And I was saying, right, I want everybody to watch Martin's kick drum foot right now. And I want your strums, and I want your accents, and I want your um, uh, different sort of lyrics to bounce with the kick drum. Yeah. Um, just to sort of make it even more evident that you're playing together, not just your parts. Mm. Um, and that was just, I think they, they got some stuff out of that, which was good. I was sitting there just trying to say to the guitarist, because, you know, you've got Anna on guitar and you've also got um, Nigel playing guitar and we also have Charlie, I think, playing guitar as well. Okay, was, cool. Actually, I can't remember. Um, they'll be all playing guitar and I'm like, you've got to play in different registers. Yeah. Otherwise, there is just no point. Um, you know, there's, Elect two, two acoustics and electric. Right. But I was just like, okay, so you're going to have to think about different voicings. I've seen Nigel use your caged system. So, you know, taking the shape that you're already playing and just moving it all the way up the neck and try to find out where the next root of that chord would be. Anyway, jargon, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's it just a way of so that each guitar isn't playing the same thing so your ears can actually pick out the different parts. Amazing, yeah. Because it's not just on a record that you can notice that you can hear it live. It's just... Yeah. And it, it, yeah, it just adds different layers and, and uh, elements to a song if you if you can really, you know, um, add those different parts to it. Nice. So that was quite nice, and I was you know I was happy to help them out um, just because I don't know we've 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 helped them out in the past and and they've they've been they've been very supportive of our gigs and they have and yeah shared our stuff from the yeah. Holly and Josh show on Facebook which you can you know like and subscribe etc etc etc. So yeah, that was nice. Uh, I was uh, teaching last week as well, which was, you know, just sort of continuing it through uh, the summer holidays, just doing private stuff, just going to some people's houses. Mm. Um, and uh, it's really nice just being able to do it rather than just going from school to their house. I'm not tired before I get there. Yeah. You know, so like a lot of the time if I'm teaching somebody after I've just been at school, um, I've, you know, I'll still be there. But I've, I've been teaching all day, so yeah. there's a lot more stuff swimming around in my head, whereas I can be a lot more focused when I'm just sitting there going, okay, I've got two students today, that's great. Yeah. I can really plan um, you know, an extra thing for them. Nice. So, yeah, that was nice. And I got a new student as well uh, who's, who's, uh, who's coming down around my house, and I'm, he's doing a, 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 like a course over the sort of five weeks of, well, we're going to do, yeah, we're going to do five lessons of, of the holidays just over August and yeah. the beginning of September just like really fast tracking him so hi hayden uh, if you're listening in um he's uh he's, he's gonna do a lot better i think i remember you know teaching with workshop situations and it didn't quite stick sometimes it doesn't work for everyone literally just doing you know half an hour with him yeah he was immediately like oh you know it just gets it yeah. yes exactly so that was really good, good. um on saturday we were in gloucestershire Ooh, in the cotswolds 
um, which was really, I think it was shiny. I don't know. It's gloss in it. Uh, oh, it's not matter sheer. <laughs> 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 emulsion sheer um, so yeah that was really nice I was playing for Dan Freeman a very old uni friend of mine and he's not old I mean he's he's like 26 but um, you he, go back yes exactly um, but yeah really really lovely fella um, mm. and uh, it was just really nice to be part of his wedding uh, it was great because the, the venue it was the Green Dragon in in, um, in Gloucestershire I can't remember near the nearest town but it was you know right in the middle of the sticks yeah and it was a 1600s pub Ooh, that wow. had extra bits sort of added on for wedding and functions. Nice. And was just walking through there, it was really difficult for me to not hit my head. I, I can't relate. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> it felt like a Hobbit pub, you know, because obviously people, you know, in the 1600s were smaller in stature. So anytime I sort of walk into old places and old houses and stuff like this, I'm smacking my head on beams <laughs> all the time. So I'm just ducking everywhere. So how far away, like how long did it take you to get there? About four hours. Oh, okay. About four hours. So we left off about uh, 10. I'd picked everybody up by 10. Yeah. Rich couldn't make it, so I was panickingly uh, messaging everybody that has depped with us before. I messaged Harry Green. I messaged Alice Birch. I messaged uh, Hannah Hinchliffe. um, And, yeah, just checking around to see who was about. Yeah. And nobody was free. Um, Gobel wasn't free, Ben Gobel, obviously. Otherwise, I asked him first. And luckily, Harrison Perkins stepped okay. up. So he has he is a, a regular at the Ipswich Jam Nights. He hasn't been there for a while, though, because he's moved to Manchester and he's studying music oh, okay. up at university. Luckily, he was back for just the weekend, basically. So and you took him back up towards... Yeah, yeah. exactly. It was about <laughs> equidistant from, <laughs> from right. Manchester. Um, and he did a really good job. Yeah. Really, really good job. We had a nice chat on the way home uh, while there and on the way home of just, you know, what he does for his nice uh, for his degree and everything. And just really interesting just to, to hear him. He's 19 and he's just a wonderful player. Great. Really good sax player. So if anybody's looking for a sax player that needs... Harrison Perkins. Yeah, Harrison Perkins. A good guy. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Dan, for having us. It was really nice to see some really old music for, music. Uh, uni music friends um, yeah. that they were just they've been following what I've been doing and they're just you know really complimentary and it was right. it was emotion Totes but they were all absolutely smashed and they're like Wee, let's get lads and I'm like oh, I can't I've got to drive another four hours uh, and uh, did was, you not stay over then no 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 oh, okay. we drove back that night Ooh. so uh, we didn't get in until four a.m. I think it was the worst I know oh, well I say it was just after four yeah. Um, cause we, yeah, it was a shorter drive on the way back. It's about three hours instead oh, without okay. traffic, et cetera. Of course. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but then we had to be up, um, and out of the house by 12 as well. I say 12, I mean, we were loading in around 12 and things like this, uh, because we had a gig up in, uh, West Norfolk, uh, near Kings Lynn ish kind of way. I can't really tell you where it is cause it's a secret location. Um, <laughs> we don't know. Harlequin fair. Oh, Harley's yes. Quinn Fair. Yeah. No, no, it, yeah, Harley has his own festival. Yeah. Um, it was really, really nice. Where he was, dressed up as a cheerleader. Yes. That's a bit psychotic and, and is married to the Joker. Um, yeah. yeah. Steve, uh, yeah, Steve Miller. Steve Miller, yes. <laughs> do, 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 do. No. Um, so, yeah, that was really nice because we, we, it was, uh, we were a bit knackered. I've got to say, you know, we'd all had about five, six hours sleep and, you know, driving another hour and a half uh, to another gig. But we'd played this festival last year. Well, I hadn't played. I was just sort of roading for Impilo. Rich and Murray had done it. Rainer hadn't because Rainer couldn't make... Rainer's the usual drummer from Impilo. Yeah. Um, but Rich was from the Lockerbillies stood in. Right, uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a big old web of inter... Rich mm, web of... Uh, you know, incestual bands um so mm. yes um so yeah they, they, we turn up the band that was supposed to play before us didn't turn up oh no so we were just like screw it let's get on and so we just set up we did an extra extra couple songs yeah um so that it could you know fill the gap a bit better and it was really nice you know there was there was artwork were there beard effects was nice there. um some really good music um we saw lady J. Oh, yeah. She was doing some storytelling. Wonderful. Um, I want to thank Em and Crystal for sorting us out. And just, you know, it was a really nice day of just, you know, really great music and, and, and a really lovely setting. And it just reminded me of Glasto. 
Wah, wah, wah. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Anyway, let's play some more music, shall we? I need um, the button back. We do. Um, so let's play something by a bit of sweet swimsuit competition. They're going to be playing here uh, as part of Kashina's uh, night at the Three Wise Monkeys alongside awesome. Orange. So that's a really good lineup. That's going to be uh, announced in the gig list. So stick around to the end. Uh, yeah. This one's called Wasted. Enjoy. Ed Sheeran's Divide Tour is officially the highest grossing concert tour of all time, beating out U2's 360 Tour. And 123 artists file an amicus brief and Led Zeppelin's closely watched Stay Away to Heaven lawsuit. Music. News. Yes. Oh, that's serious. serious. Uh, that was wasted by uh, swimsuit competition just before that. Check them out. It's all over the old streaming services. So, Harley, what's this about the Divide Tour? So... According to uh, the concert tracking company, is that the name of the company? I, I don't know. So, yeah. uh, Ed Sheeran's Divide Tour crossed uh, crossed seven hundred and thirty six point seven million dollars in estimated gross and revenues today, which is Friday. Yeah, and he still had twelve dates left. That's mad, isn't it? So, so smash the record. Yeah, um, he's gone out and smashed it. It's it's absolutely smashed it. Um, the it beats U2's all time record of seven hundred thirty five point four million set on set on July the thirtieth, two thousand eleven by U two, obviously. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's mad, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely mad. I mean but it's crazy that that record has remained unbeaten for like eight years. Yeah, with artists doing better and better each time. Especially I mean U two I wouldn't have thought that would have been their biggest year as well. I don't know. Yeah, I could be wrong. In the 80s or something, or the yeah, that's it. That yeah. was. You but know. the thing is, they had fewer dates as well. Oh, that's the thing. They, so because they had 110 shows, and Ed Sheeran did 255. He's, well, he's, he's got that plan, so he's it, not even finished that yet. Yeah, yeah. He's still got well, still had 12 dates left, and uh, that's finishing off in our hometown. Not to say where that is, which is reflective of ticket price, isn't it? That's a very good. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. if you think, I mean, because the average ticket price uh, for Divide is about 86 bucks. So, what's that, like 50 quid, something like that? Uh, yeah, 60 yeah. down, yeah. Um, and by comparison, the U2's 360 tool was about $115. Right. So, that's probably about 90 so, odd, 80, yeah. 90 odd uh, in today's money, um, that's... which is and 90 quid, I mean. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's with adjusted for inflation. So, um, they, they were talking about how why they priced it cheaper in comparison because apparently he that his tours, what well, Ed Sheeran's tour is cheaper than sort of like the, the other artists of you know of, of the time, so like Bruno Mars and Ariana Grande. Okay, yeah. um, because they were sort of conscious of the fact fewer that, band members. True, <laughs> yeah, it's true. But they were <coughs> conscious of the fact that the fans are also attending festivals and other outings. So I mean, mm. they've kind of got less disposable income and because of the amount of festivals that are going on. And maybe something to the fact, like I say, that Ed Sheeran fans are very much in the the mainstream and listen to lots of music and will go to see lots of gigs, perhaps more so than a rock band yeah, fan. Maybe. May. But I mean, what you uh, mentioned there was a really interesting thing about the last date of the tour. Oh, yeah. So he's finishing finishing his tour in his, I say his hometown, not his hometown, but kind of his hometown. Yeah. Anyone, who, like, anyone who lives in Suffolk will... Direct, are we gonna we're gonna give it away? Go on, where yeah. do we live, Harley? Ipswich. There it is. Who, knew? Who knew? Here on IO Radio. <laughs> yeah. Ipswich Actually, Online Radio. There we go. Uh, anyway, so um yeah, that's uh amazing that he's kind of bringing it home. Yeah. It's that's the crazy thing is that a record, a world record breaking world tour yeah. is finishing up in Ipswich. And now if that does not do something for putting Ipswich on the map, I don't know what would. That is, yeah, it is mad. Well, apart from Sound City, which is coming soon in October. So I worked out. Right. He's done 255 dates. Yeah. And if he doesn't make, I'm not sure if it's counting the money for the ticket sales from his shows that he's already 
already yet to do, so I'm sure right. it will. Yeah, it's probably. Um, so the only thing to add on is merch sales at the event, which will be a massive amount because mm-hmm, everyone, mm-hmm. especially at Chantry, if I if I was going to that gig, I want a T-shirt to say I was there yeah. watching that guy yeah. who played on the other in the other park for yeah. free. Yeah, exactly. I want to be, say that I was there amongst those people because so, it's a it's a it's a yeah, it's, it's a once in a lifetime occasion. How much are you making? Just under three million dollars a night. A night, right? A night. So pressure. But think about that. It's about usually about ninety percent of that goes on production. Yeah. Um. So he'd probably get about ten percent of that. Yeah, I don't know how much of that is. Um, that was what Elton John's management said recently. Is that that's what Elton John kind of made was ten percent of what the ticket sales were. Okay, I wasn't sure how much of this was like just profit mm-hmm. or or just gross. Um, what you know, stuff. everything before costs or anything oh. like that. I I think I, I was reading it as if it was profit, and if so, yama yama. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, this I say three million per night, and this goes in the same week as. I had to contact a venue Aww. because we got paid a hundred pound by check and they spelled my name wrong. Oh, how so, do they spell it? Without an R, H A L E Y. Halley. Yep. Uh, <laughs> As so in, like, that's the a comet. Thing. Yeah. Nice yeah. where well, you are, you know, and interstellar, mate. We're splitting that four ways. <laughs> so uh, how are the other half live? Eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get ten percent of that. But at the same time, I am sure Ed has done countless freebie gigs. I think because anyone who's got yeah, to that stage absolutely. will have done that. Maybe and he's just broken even. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, he's still paying off his uni debt. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I think he's sure with that. But apparently, he's supposed to be you know, becoming a billionaire soon, and he's going to be one of the first people to do it before thirty. So, wow. No, maybe not one of the first, but you know, there's a very select few. You can afford hair dye. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, let's get on to the, uh, the news which really tickled my fancy. Uh, 123 artists have filed an amicus brief in Led Zeppelin's closely watched Stairway to Heaven lawsuit. This has all been going for ages. Uh, it all started back in 2014 when a descendant of Randy Craig Wolf, a former Spirit band member, so the band Spirit, and songwriter made a ludicrous claim. Uh, so it wasn't the, the, the band member that made the claim. It was uh, his descendant. Um, yeah. Uh, Led Zeppelin allegedly, that, I did some bunny ears there, ripped off uh, Spirit's Taurus, a, a song called Taurus, I was listening to it this morning, yeah. uh, <laughs> to create the now iconic intro of Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> Denied. Uh, the popular group allegedly stole the guitar riff introduction from Wolf and his band. As expected, a California federal jury officially rejected the claims after uh, listening to both songs. The case fell apart after Led Zeppelin's legal team revealed the guitar riff actually exists in the public domain. Okay. Which is an interesting way of doing it. Maybe they just sort of saw, oh, we might get pressed for this. Let's just make it so How, we can own the rights for it. For what reason is it in the public domain? I think it's also, there was just this kind of, uh, there's this, this, this descending chromatic riff it's got this kind of uh there's a latin vibe to it a lot of latin uh so exactly it's just going straight through that so i must maybe it's just been like that for a long time it's just too it's not original enough to be able to be owned right but even though it's iconic doesn't mean have to be original right um so keep in mind spirit has opened for led zeppelin uh, and Led Zeppelin have opened for Spirit. This so, is back in the sort of 60s. They're um, buds. Yeah, they're friends. And during his life, the guy who wrote the song, Taurus, never entertained the idea of fight, failing legal like, action against the group. Right, So yeah. it's the same things like what we were talking about with hologram stuff. It's yeah. like people doing stuff post-mortem, which the original person would not have been happy with. Anyway, the Nashville Songwriters Association International, the Songwriters of North America, Corn and Tool, amongst many others, have submitted a new filing to aid the group in the closely watched infringement cases, aiding Led Zeppelin. Um, they, right. they, yeah, so they, they filed an amicus brief. An amicus brief, in legal terms, is basically um, when somebody who is not involved in the case can write in to the judge uh, and, and you know the, the people leading the cases yeah. to inform them of anything that might, in, uh, you know... In, in, 
sort of I don't know change the the the, the court proceedings. Yeah, um, and it just sort of basically informed them of of, of of anything they might have missed, um, which is you know totally legal. I mean, if they're not an interested party per se, you know, not parts of Led Zeppelin's estate and things like that, it's, it's there's no conflict of interest there. But okay. I mean, they would just sort of say, go on. You were saying? Um, sorry. Yeah, go on. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the Ninth Circuit of Court, Court Appeals, 123 artists, along with the organisations, explained they have significant interest in the case. Um, they've quoted to say, any artist who reads the opinion may very well fear that the very common use of descending chromatic scales, arpeggios, or short sequences of three notes, like do, 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 do. You know, can yeah. you actually copyright that? Um any elements in the public domain could form the basis of an infringement action. So it's basically saying that it could open the doors for lots of litigation in the future, which really have are based on nothing. Okay. Which brings us to this section of our show. Thing I found I brought back this morning. Jingle. I mean, what do you have to do for a copyright infringement sort of flag to be thrown at you when you've written a song? What That's do you a- think it is? That's a very good question because it's so mm. subjective. Really is. Um, were was Ed Sheeran successfully sued? Yes, by the Marvin Gaye. Um, for, let's get it on. Yes, and he yeah. was, it was also for somebody else. I can't remember the name of him. Now, um, yeah. I, I would argue that really the only thing they had in in common was a tempo and the, the chord nas- pattern. Yeah, and even yeah, can you really? Because it was just one. One first inversion for five. Yeah. Um, for that song. Da, ba, ba, ba. Wait, I mean, surely you can't copyright that. I mean, yeah. this song had a similar feel, but the the melody and the lyrics were not the same. So No, and the, the subject matter is, I would say, different. Yeah. Um, you know, I, so I, how was that? I, I mean, my, the, the Marvin Gaye estate is notoriously... Uh, a bit crazy about money. Yeah. That's how Marvin Gaye died, was he was shot by his dad because he was owed money. There we go. That's, <laughs> that says a lot about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I don't know whether it was something, was it like in court? I don't know. I think was it was it settled like out of court? <laughs> because, I, you know, that's the thing. Like, Surely if that's a thing, then yeah, the gates are open for a lot mm. of things to be mm-hmm. very similar. There's a you really know? interesting website, right, which I was checking Chuck out this Berry morning. Chuck Berry could sue... Half the world. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or just, you know, Robert Johnson. Yeah. You yeah. Know, one of the godfathers of the blues. Um, anyway, yeah. So there's a great... You could sue someone for his soul back. Uh, yeah, is that yeah. the devil. You sue the devil. Um, people have tried to sue God before. Yeah, so, how'd that go? So think, uh, <laughs> I don't think he turned up. Yeah. So uh, there's Busy a great boy. website called www.thatsongsoundslike.com. Right, and it's actually really good because it's basically just got this big feed of songs that people have flagged up to say they sound mm. like each other. Um, which not all of them, you know, have had court cases or anything like that thrown at them. Yeah, there has been one recently, which was uh, "Dark Horse" by Katy Perry. That's quite recently just been uh, defeated in court. Okay, by uh, a Christian rap song called "Joyful Noise," um, and so they lost the case. And a lot of I listen. I listen to the two songs. I don't think they sound very similar. Right. They're both they've got sort of trap kind of beats. They're similar, but coincidentally, yeah. is it that kind? I, of... I don't know if they. But I, mean, I didn't read enough into it as to whether the the, the, the songwriters for Katy Perry actually did do it. Mm. Um, you know, rip it off. But I don't know. It's uh, dubious. Yeah. I mean, a lot of like sort of grassroots songwriters and and sort of people, you know, of the smaller profession part of the profession like myself yeah might sit there and go yay you know we're bringing down the big guys but you're really screwing yourself up for the future if you write a hit song and then it's found out yeah to sound a lot like somebody else's there's a there there are things that go the other way there are people who write who go i wanted to do a song that sounds like this this is the vibe i was going for i've done that a lot (laughs) so they write it they change a few bits to make it not enough like not enough that can be suable. Well, one would hope. But at the same time, why? if you want a sound, song to sound like this, if you're inspired by a piece of music and you're like, you know, I want to capture this essence, why Why shouldn't... What, then, by the, if your inspiration comes from another song, mm. 
It's like saying, well, you're not allowed to write that song anymore. Songwriters do it with themselves. Prince did it with himself. He right. did it with uh, 1999. He goes, I yeah. was dreaming when I wrote this. So give me if it goes to bed. Don't know the words. Yeah. And then there's, and he also wrote Manic Monday. Yeah. Yes. It's exactly the same melody. So he's ripped himself up. But he's not going to sue himself, is he? So that's not besides the point. Yeah. I've got a little list here. Okay of songs that have uh, been flagged and the artists all know about it, yeah. um, of songs that sound the same. So there was Viva La Vida, this was quite a thing, by Coldplay. Yes. And If I Could Fly by Joe Satriani. That was a, that went to court, didn't it? It was that... Yeah. And uh, I, I don't think that Joe Satriani won that one. I think right. Coldplay got that one. They got um, more money, didn't they? Which I don't think they properly... <laughs> ripped it off but I don't know um, there was Hope by R.E.M. Uh, and Suzanne by Leonard Cohen um, I don't know either so um, um, both great songs okay R.E.M. didn't notice that they'd they'd done it Leonard Cohen said ah I don't mind okay and he said to be honest to be honest, what was his quote I can't remember what he said he said something like um, it would have been greedy uh, of me to uh, have written the song but also to have made money from it Right. I was like, all right. <laughs> Have you um heard the one about, I don't know if you've got on your list there, uh, Echoes um, and Phantom of the Opera? Oh, da -na 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 -na. Yeah, literally. Echoes same by Pink Floyd, yeah, Andrew Lloyd Webber. It's, you listen to the two and it's it's so obvious. And Echoes came first, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and in an interview, someone... But again, can you copyright a, com uh, a chromatic sequence? Potentially. It's but also rhythms, though, isn't it? It's rhythms and it's tempo and it's... I guess it's the feel as well. It's very much in the same timbre. There's but in an interview, uh, Dave Gilmore, um, someone said, well, are you aware? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm aware. It's, it's very obvious, you know. Yeah. And they went, are you going to sue him? He was like, no, nah, we've got enough money. And <laughs> why, why should we ruin someone else's... Uh, Reputation. Yeah, and or at least, you know, ruin... It's Phantom of is a great, a great show. Mm. Why should I ruin that? If it's that what they've done with it is great, so yeah. I'll let, let them have their time. That's good. I think it's a nice way of looking at it. Yeah. Uh, Creep by Radiohead uh, and The Air That I Breathe by The Hollies. Uh, uh, okay. on, uh, on sort of second listen, um, Tom York and the guys from Radiohead actually said, okay, that does sound so very similar. So they gave The Hollies a songwriting credit. So they earned some money off it. Um, and they just gave it, it was out of court. Yeah. Um, what's another one? Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve and The Last Time by The Rolling Stones. Right. Um, that's the... Da, 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 yeah. Da, da. And The Rolling Stones get 100% of the royalties for that song. Do they? Yeah, it was settled Ooh. in court that the, 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 the sample was used too much and it's basically the... Because that's that whole song is based yeah. on that sample, isn't but it? But I, I sit there and think of the, the melody which The Rolling Stones didn't write, so I think that's a bit unfair. Yeah. Or was it The Verve? The Verve actually said, uh, I mean, it's the most successful song they've written yeah. <laughs> ever, which they didn't actually write. It's the most sex successful song they didn't write. There was the Last Night by The Strokes and American Girl by Tom Pitt and the Heartbreakers. The the intro sounds... Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say it's a 12 bar. Uh, uh, so essentially is a 12 not bar not quite not yeah. quite uh, but yeah I know what you mean but yeah uh, and again the Strokes said to Tom Petty they're like oh, I didn't realise it sounded so similar and Tom Petty was like ah, I like it <laughs> so yeah, it's fair. fine um, what, what, what it's do you good, need good, it's a good excuse to you know meet your heroes there was Waking Up by Elastica and No More Heroes by The Stranglers they used the do, same do 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 and, uh, and The Stranglers did sue and they actually made quite a lot of money off that song oh good um, the last one <laughs> I only say that because I really like them you like The Stranglers <laughs> uh, and the last one obviously Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams and Got to Give Up by Marvin Gaye I'm not completely sold on that one no um, I dislike the Robin Thicke track and I didn't like the video because of the old objective defying women yeah that's um, a thing but the, I mean it's just a drum beat yeah really and a little bit of a rhythm down down it's two chords down down I mean you know it, there's so little to it it's almost hard what's to, your conclusion to this then Harley I, I think there's, I mean there are certain things I've heard that you've said I've gone yeah definitely mm -hmm. uh, but it also sounds like these artists they can have a conversation out, outside of court I think a lot of these things can be settled if, you know, the writers, I mean, not all so easy if they're not around anymore, like in the Marvin Gaye cases. Mm -hmm. um, but why not just go like, right, okay, well, these songs do sound similar. Um, look, we we didn't intend it for this way. I, I'll, I've i not heard this song before, so it's just a coincidence. Or I do have, I have heard that song before. 
never thought that it might be, but it might be subconscious. Shall we uh, sling yeah. you a credit or two? You know? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just, you know, don't steal people's work. No. But also, don't steal people's work if you are, you know, like like with the Rolling Stones, they didn't write that song. No. They might have given, yeah, the, the sample might have been used. But I don't know, it's kind of the same thing with the YouTube thing of, of you know, getting Split. what we talked about before. Yeah, it shouldn't go 100. I don't think it should necessarily... I could absolutely rip off a song and change the lyrics or change the melody to be a different song and it's still i've still created something exactly I anyway we're running out of time so we've got to go on to the <laughs> so uh this weekend we've got august 9th which is the friday ad johnson and special guest dusky sunday so ad johnson we played a bit earlier he's playing friday at eight o'clock at the angel in woodbridge so check that one out nice one we have also on the 9th of august we have fox fest what the fox what the fox say is in <laughs> it's at the fox in new fox in in newborn really hard to say fox in in woodbridge we've got james now we've got max wildwood uh i believe there are many other bands playing well, as well uh, that's my band harley oh was you playing the lockabillies are playing on the friday harley. oh you didn't write that down that's oh, i did write it down i put suffolk lockabillies for some reason okay the okay. suffolk lockabillies <laughs> um in case you wonder where we're from <laughs> august 9th we've got the phil jackson rock and roll band uh, on the friday are gonna be at the salutation in ipswich at nine o'clock amazing also we have on the 9th of august at um three wise monkeys We've got a Kachina Presents Surf and Skate mu- Music Night. Um, Robert Castellani. Yes, uh, we have Orange. We have a swimsuit composition, who we've already played. Uh, so she got some amazing artists there. That's great. And they've got some nice clothes and nice designs. They're really nice, all very sustainably sourced. I, I like that Robert Castellani is still involved in the live music scene. Yes. He didn't want to gig anymore. He's an amazing guitarist, yeah. but he's still like... I can still do brand partnerships and put gigs on, yeah. which I think a lot more pl- clothing companies should do. They yeah. should, they're not going to, if they just approach a venue and say, can you give me a budget and I'll put on a really good night and yeah. my brand will help to promote it. I think it's a really good idea. Amazing. Awesome. Um, uh, August 10th, we've got a night of a live acoustic music from Curtis Cully, who we're going to finish the show off with today. And James Nunn, that's at the Brewer's Arms, just over the road from here at eight o'clock in Ipswich. Nice. August 10th, we have Soap Your Auntie. Whoop, whoop. At the Hand in Hand in Trimley, so you're only awesome. Oscar Charlton on guitar. Yeah. That's why we've got Mr. Nick Keeble with us that day. Shreddy Vedder. Yeah. <laughs> Shreddy the um, head. Yeah, that's at the hand in, uh, Trimley Hand in Hand. So check it out. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, August 10th, Sham 69. Yeah. Like the, well, some of the Sham 69. Come on. Come on. Hurry up, Harley. Come on. No, sorry. Uh, they're <laughs> playing at the Westgate Ward uh, on Saturday at 7 o'clock. Awesome. Uh, back at Three Wise Monkeys on Sunday, we have Andy Hopkins' Soul Songbook on the 11th. Yeah, I don't so, know what time that starts. I think it's yeah. usually about four or between four or six. Cool. Is that a duo? Will that be her and I? Her? I don't know. Check Soul out song. the event for details. Exactly. And the last one I've got written down is my little gig, uh, the Lockerbillies duo at the Rampant Horse in Needham Market. Awesome. We've not played there before. I've been there a bunch of times. It's one of my dad's locals. Please um, take fun. every opportunity for. Uh, to if someone asks you a question, the answer is no. Always reply with nay. <laughs> no. Um, Sunday, eleventh of August. That's when we're playing at four o'clock, four till seven at the Rampant Horse. Amazing. But um, yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Oh well, yes, thank um, you very much. You've got anything else to add? Um, no, I've got stuff to subtract though. Oh, okay. Um, nothing to divide. No, that's the tour that's that's finishing off in in wherever we're from. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. even know where we're from. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening in today. It's been an absolute pleasure as per you. Well, I apologise, my voice has been a bit mental. I've done about six hours worth of singing this weekend. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, we'll see you on Thursday for the podcasts. Uh, we're all over the Facebooks, iTunes. Oh, yeah. Please give us a rating. Please give us a yeah. share and a subscribe. We've had some new, we've had some new, uh, new reviews come up, some new Thank stars. You. So make Amazing. sure if you're on uh, Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, you can give us a, a five star review Amazing. or a four, whatever. I mean, be honest, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, just trash us, it's fine. We won't cry. Any pub- publicity is good publicity, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we love you and stuff. <laughs> 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 <Bye>. <laughs>
is isolated by Curtis Cully. Why do I feel so alone when I'm surrounded by people I know? This smile on my face, it won't go. You'll only see what I choose to show. The struggle is invisible. And I feel battle, and I'm so, so isolated. 